All right, so a lot just dropped across the AI world this week, and it feels like every company's trying to outdo the other. Google secretly testing Gemini 3, OpenAI just published a study basically listing the jobs most at risk of being replaced by AI, and then out of nowhere, an open source model called Ovi showed up. People are calling it the open source VO3, since it's hitting similar quality, but runs fully local. It turns text into short talking videos with synced audio. All right, so first, Gemini 3. Google's been running quiet A-B tests inside its AI studio, and people have already spotted references to something called Gemini Beta 3.0 Pro. That means the model's being benchmarked internally right now, and it's looking pretty serious. It's not selectable yet in the model dropdown, but developers have seen it appear in the back end under starter apps. It looks like Google's planning to launch it publicly soon, right when their Gemini at Work live stream goes live. That event's probably going to show what Gemini 3 can actually do. Early testers say Gemini 3 crushes complex coding tasks, especially front-end development. In one test, it generated a full SVG of a PlayStation 4 controller, perfectly drawn, minimal errors. That's not just text reasoning anymore, that's real graphical precision. And here's what's interesting, when compared to Anthropic's Claude 4.5 Sonnet, Gemini 3's outputs were more accurate and faster in SVG generation. Coding speed is high, and it's got enhanced multimodal understanding, meaning it handles both text and visuals better than before. Developers also noticed UI tweaks inside AI Studio. There's a new section called My Stuff. It's basically a gallery where all your generated images, snippets, or bits of code live which hints that Google's turning AI Studio into a more integrated ecosystem. So this goes beyond a regular model upgrade. It's shaping up to be a full transformation of the entire workspace. Now, Gemini 3 comes in more than one form. Code references show two main variants, Gemini 3 Pro and Gemini 3 Flash. Pros for advanced reasoning, deeper thinking, long form tasks. Flash is built for speed. That dual lineup is basically Google's way of covering both power users and real-time applications. People testing it have even spotted terms like DeepThink and Agent Mode buried in the commits. DeepThink seems to be Google's take on multi-step reasoning, basically a chain of thought architecture baked into the model itself so it can handle long problem-solving sessions without losing track. Agent Mode, though, that's the fun part. Browser control. The model will be able to perform actions like research or data entry directly inside a browser. That's a massive step toward autonomous agents. Pretty much Google's answer to ChatGPT's agent kit or Copilot's autonomous actions. And the rollout strategy is classic Google. They'll give enterprise users early access through Vertex AI starting this month, then let developers in through cloud tiers between November and December, and finally push a consumer rollout early 2026. Android 17 and Google Search will likely get it first, tied together with Chrome and Workspace, it's a staggered rollout designed to stress test it before it reaches the masses. If all goes right, Gemini 3 could boost Google's reach to over 500 million active users by the end of the year. It also keeps them in the race against OpenAI's GPT-5 and Elon Musk's Grok 4. What's wild is that these models aren't just competing on benchmarks anymore, they're competing on ecosystems. Google's tying Gemini into Chrome, Pixel phones, even workspace apps while OpenAI is going the platform route with its ChatGPT apps, SDK, and Agent Kit. Now, while Google's polishing its next model, something completely different came from the open source side. A developer just released a model called Ovi. It's based on WAN 2.25B, which is a text-to-video diffusion backbone. And the crazy part is, it can generate five-second videos at 24 frames per second in 720p. So short realistic clips that include both visuals and synced audio. The man in the picture grinned and said, hello, everyone. Basically, you type a line of dialogue, the AI creates a character, animates it, and makes it speak. The OV model supports both text to video and image to video. So you can feed it a still image, like a portrait, and it will animate the character talking while matching the mouth movement to the text prompt. It uses Comfy UI, which a lot of creators already use for stable diffusion workflows. You just install a custom node called Comfy UI OV. It runs locally or on your own server. The setup takes a few command line steps. You activate your virtual environment, go into your custom nodes folder, 
clone the GitHub repo, and then install dependencies with pip install minus r requirements.txt. Then you restart ComfyUI and drop in the model weights, the OV11B BF16 tensors file, and MM Audio model files. If you've used MM Audio before, it plugs right in. Once it's all loaded, you'll see the new OV engine loader node. You point it to your BF16 model file, choose a text encoder like UMT515, and hook everything up. The attention selector, Sage, attention works best, latent decoder, and video generator. The generator takes your prompt and produces the five second video. If you're doing image to video, you load a first frame image, like a person standing still, and then add a text prompt to make that image speak. To trigger speech, you wrap your script between brackets labeled S and E. That's how the model knows which part should become spoken audio. So if you type S, hey, welcome to the show E inside your text prompt, the AI generates lip synced audio saying exactly that. It's pretty clever. The output comes out as a combined video with audio. You set the frame rate to 24, combine the frames and audio, and done. The first time you run it, it downloads a few tokenizer files, but after that, it's smooth. A five second clip at 50 sampling steps takes roughly two minutes to generate. No torch compile or speed ups. Now there are limits. You can't choose or clone voices. It picks a random one each time. There's no reference audio or way to match tone between clips and video length is fixed at five seconds, no more, no less. So if you chain multiple scenes, you might get the same character speaking in slightly different voices. It's a fun experiment, but not production grade yet. Still, having both video and audio generation from a single open source model is a big deal. It reminds some people of Google's VO3 text to video system, except this runs entirely on Comfy UI locally. Artists have already started experimenting. One used Quinn image edit to make a consistent character, then applied lightning four step LoRa to generate multiple scenes with that same character performing different actions. They then stitched all the clips into one video with synced audio. It's rough, but shows where this stuff is heading creators building short films straight from text. Now let's switch back to OpenAI because while Google's pushing the tech forward and open source folks are democratizing video generation, OpenAI just published something that might hit closer to home for a lot of people. A new paper titled, Measuring the Performance of Our Models on Real World Tasks, basically measures how often AI beats humans at their own jobs. The study used something they called GDP-VAL to test AI models across nine of the United States' most profitable industries. They ran AI models against human workers and compared output quality and speed. The results? AI performed as well as or better than humans in roughly 48% of tests. That's almost half. Certain jobs got completely dominated. Counter and retail clerks lost to AI 81% of the time. Sales managers and shipping clerks were outperformed in about 80% of cases. Editors, software developers, and private investigators each saw AI outperform them around 70 to 75% of the time. Even social workers, roles you'd think require empathy and human understanding, lost about half the time. The study did show that creative and leadership positions are more resistant, at least for now. Film directors, producers, and journalists only lost to AI in around one third of trials. So the human edge still exists where judgment, emotion, and storytelling matter most. Sam Altman talked about this in a recent interview and he was surprisingly direct about it. He said a lot of current customer support jobs, people talking on the phone or typing in chat are basically done. He expects AI to handle those tasks better soon. He even suggested that around 40% of all jobs could eventually be automated by AI. And that's not just a random number, it's based on what they're seeing in model performance. And then he went further. Altman said he believes that one day AI could replace the CEO role entirely, even his own. In an interview with Matthias Doffner from Axel Springer, he literally said, there'll come a time when an AI could be a better CEO of OpenAI than him, and he'd be nothing but enthusiastic when that happens. He didn't say it with regret. He sounded genuinely curious about the idea of automating his own position. That's a rare thing to hear from someone running the company that's building the automation itself. But not everyone agrees with that level of optimism or fatalism, depending on how you see it. IBM CEO Arvind Krishna said during a panel at South by Southwest that AI is not going to replace humans completely. 
He disagreed with predictions from Anthropic's Dario Amade that 90% of code will be written by AI within six months. Krishna thinks it'll be closer to 20 to 30% at best. Some use cases are simple and perfect for AI, he said, but many others will stay in human hands for a long time. Still, the trend's obvious now. The race isn't about smarter chatbots anymore. It's about who builds the first fully autonomous ecosystem, where AI handles everything from reasoning to real world action. Anyway, that's where things stand now. If you've been following AI for a while, you know how fast these shifts turn into real tools. So we'll see how Gemini 3's official launch shake up the next few months. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.